explain Pat what up. Uh -huh. um, just gotten finished talking about then was the protein cyclin and we've seen its effect on this MPF, the maturation promoting factor. Well it turns out that MPF activity is actually the protein cyclin plus another protein, a kinase, called CDK, the cyclin dependent kinase. So when the CDK and the cyclin come together, they create MPF. And then it's the MPF that's responsible for various activities during mitosis. And one of the major functions of MPF is to phosphorylate the nuclear lamins that make up the nuclear envelope break those down and now mitosis can occur where the microtubules will have access to the DNA or the chromosomes and allow them to be separated. Well we're also going to look at another model organism that is highly homologous to us a single eukaryotic organism the yeast and what we're going to be looking at now is the yeast version of MPF so again, MPF is cyclin plus a CDK. And what we're going to see is how cyclins and CDKs, when they come together, and then how they actually get activated in order to perform the various MPF activities. And again, we're going to be using yeast as our model organism because again, their uh, proteins are highly homologous to us humans. So again, this is just illustrating that, again, there's two types of yeasts that are used um, in the biological sciences, and one of which, which we'll be looking at today, is called the fission yeast, the S. pombe. And again, as you can see here, they too have a cell cycle. They have an M phase, a G1, an S, and G2. Okay? And again, what we're going to be looking at is the MPF activity that is again responsible for the transition from the G2 to M phase or mitosis. Okay. So to help us understand the MPF activity and how the MPF actually gets activated in order again to go from G2 to M, we are going to cause a series of mutations and see how these mutations affect the mitotic process. So let's take a look. So what we're going to be looking at then are various mutations in a protein called CDC2. Okay. So CDC2, I'm going to tell you right now, is simply the yeast version of MPF. Okay. So yeast MPF is CDC2. So, wild type CDC2, so that's non mutated, normal functioning CDC2, causes regular, even cellular division. So, here we have one cell that is being pinched off and forming two new daughter cells, both of which are of equal size. So, nothing funny about that. Okay? Then we're going to look at different types of mutations, again, affecting the CDC2 or the yeast MPF. We're going to be looking at a recessive mutation which causes no cellular division but constant growth. So now you have one large cell that is overgrown and then you have the dominant form of the CDC2 mutation which causes accelerated division leading us to have these much smaller yeast cells develop. Okay? So what we're going to see is how is it that these various mutations can occur and their effect then on mitosis. So again in one case in the recessive you have no division just constant growth versus the dominant form of the mutation of the MPF activity where you have accelerated division so you have a bunch of tiny cells being populated. Okay? So to understand obviously how the mutation occurs we need to understand the mechanism. What we have outlined is this mechanism then of the CDC2 or again the yeast version of MPF. Okay. So again as I mentioned before at the beginning MPF is simply 
the coming together of the cyclin protein, illustrated here in green, coming together and hooking up with the CDK, the cyclin-dependent kinase, illustrated here in blue. So these two come together and they are now known as MPF. Okay. Now what's unique about the CDK is that there are two specific amino acids, okay? Y15 and T161. The Y15 is tyrosine at the 15th position, if you were to look at the amino acid primary sequence. And the T161 is threonine at the 161st amino acid position. So again, both of these, the tyrosine and the T161, are located and part of the CDK. Right? Now what we're going to see is that just because the cyclin and CDK have come together, this MPF is not activated yet. It's going to be activated after a series of phosphorylations. So we're going to see that there's going to be regulatory phosphorylation going on. So we'll see that a phosphate is going to get attached to the Y15, a phosphate is going to get attached to the T161, and then one of these phosphates will be removed while the other one remains attached to the CDK, and this will be the active form of MPF that again will help transition the cell from G2 and enter M phase. So let's take a look then at how this phosphorylation occurs and who's responsible for the phosphorylation. So at the very beginning, again, the MPF, the MPF is formed, cyclin plus your CDK. Then we come across our first regulatory kinase. This regulatory kinase is called WE1. Okay? WE1 is going to phosphorylate the CDK at the Y15 position. So tyrosine at the 15th position is going to be phosphorylated by WE1. This MPF is still inactive. Okay? So the phosphate attached at the Y15 on the CDK is known as an inhibitory phosphate or inhibitory phosphorylation. So just because there's a phosphate here, this protein is still not active. So we have no MPF activity yet. Okay? Next, we have another kinase called CAC. This is the cyclin activating kinase. Okay? Or the cyclin dependent activating kinase. Right? So what CAC is going to do is it will phosphorylate the T161 the 3 and E 161. So now at this point we have a phosphate at the Y15 courtesy of WE1 and we now have a phosphate attached to the T161 courtesy of the CAC kinase. Okay. Now having two phosphates attached to CDK we are still inactive so again there is still no MPF activity but now, pay attention, now we're going to see a phosphatase. So phosphatase is an enzyme that removes phosphate groups. This phosphatase is known as CDC25. CDC25 will remove the inhibitory phosphate off of Y15. So CDC25 removes the phosphate off of the tyrosine leaving the phosphate attached to the 3 and 161 now this is the active MPF this is the MPF that's going to help stimulate the cell and go from G2 into M phase and that's what we want okay so again the MPF and the cyclins come together still inactive we one phosphorylates Y15 you're still inactive CAC phosphorylates T161, still inactive because you still have the phosphate on the Y15. In order to become active, we have to remove the phosphate off of Y15. CDC25 is a phosphatase 
that is responsible for removing the phosphate off of Y15. Now we have an active MPF. Okay? So now that you understand, or if you need to replay it, replay it, but you understand the major players here. Okay? The we one kinase, the CDC25 phosphatase. Okay? Those are the main ones I want you to remember just now. Because now we're going to look at how those recessive mutations and dominant mutations occur. And it's because of the CDC25 and the we one So, take a look at this. Okay? <clears throat> so now we've got two scenarios here to look at. So remember the elongated version. Okay, so here we have the uh, yeast cell not going through division, but simply growing. Okay, so it's in an increased G2 state. So it's in G2, it's not able to go into the M phase. So right off the bat, you should be able to realize that if this cell is just growing and not able to go into mitosis or M phase, then therefore the MPF activity must be inactive. So you do not have a functioning MPF because remember, active MPF stimulates G2 to M phase. But here you are arrested in G2. Therefore you constantly grow, but you have no division. So what's responsible for that is having an excess of W1 and little to know CDC25, so a deficit in CDC25. So think about the image before and the mechanism. So if you have a lot of W1, W1, remember, is responsible for putting a phosphate on the Y15 of the CDK. This keeps the MPF inactive. The CDC25 was responsible for removing that phosphate off of Y15 and allowing the MPF activity to be active. But we don't have CDC25. So we have a lot of we one which makes sure that the CDK always has a phosphate on the Y15. And because you do not have enough CDC25, therefore that phosphate on the Y15 never gets removed. Therefore, you have an inactive MPS and you are going to be arrested in the G2 state. But now, let's flip the situation. Okay? Now, we have a deficit of W1, but an excess or a lot of CDC25. Now, we're going to have accelerated division. Because the excess CDC25 is going to make sure that all the CDKs do not have phosphates on the Y15. Because remember, the CDC25 is responsible for removing phosphates off of Y15 on the CDK. Therefore, this will constantly keep MPF activity turned on. And if MPF activity is turned on, you're going to have constant cell division, leading to accelerated division here. So a bunch of tinier cells being generated. 